Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Subdivision, which is the sequel to one of Jen's and my favorite games of all time, Suburbia, which is an excellent, excellent SimCity inspired game where you're you know, doing a lot of city planning. Now here comes the sequel, uh, Subdivision, which is from a different designer but published by you know, uh, Lucas Hedgren instead of Ted Allspock, who did design the original, but it's from the same publisher. And so that really means Ted, the original designer, is putting his stamp on this as a worthy successor to his game. And spoiler alert, Jen and I agree. We think this is a wonderful, wonderful game, and I'm going to try and demonstrate that right now as we start planning our subdivision. Now it's interesting, this subdivision, we are building a subdivision. If you notice, the, our, my, here's my player board. It's kind of in the shape of a hex. I tend to think of this game, when, I, when we finished and we built, this is representing one hex from Suburbia, which is really kind of cool, it, you know, it, it, kind of a nice over, you know, because the scale is much smaller, it's much more intimate. We're dealing with like individual parcels of land as opposed to like a big major section of a suburb. And, um, I'm, I'm, you know, enough about the big picture, let's just jump right into it. We're going to be playing a two-player game today, here's my board, here's Jen's board. First choice you have to make uh, when you're playing the game is, do you want side A or side B? I've chosen this side, where the major highway or major road, I guess, runs right through my subdivision. Jen, I, I, for her, I chose the other one that goes around the outside. Now, you can choose randomly. You can choose whichever one you prefer. They're both perfectly balanced. Either one is fine. But I figured I'd just show off the two different ones. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's see here. Now, you also start with two bucks, which we both have. And before the game starts, we are going to get our first year's worth of tiles. You can see over here, this game takes place over four years. One, two, three, four. And this, uh, and this one represents the first year. There's ten tiles here. Well, actually, there's enough tiles here so that every player gets five tiles. So let's go ahead and split them up. Just randomly. D, D, D. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So, I ended up getting, now these are all zoning tiles. These, in these stacks, it's always going to be full of zoning tiles, and there's five. There's civic, luxury, industrial, commercial, and residential. And when you build these things, they all give you access to special abilities. There are different ones. Now me, oh, I ended up with three luxury, one industrial, and one residential, whereas Jen got two residential and three commercial. Okay, now, so we've, we're, we're set up, we're ready to go. Oh, one other thing. <clears throat> we, this first year will be finished once each of us has played has, you know, four zoning tiles. We've zoned four little sections of our city. The fifth one, it just gets removed. So, yeah, I guess you can consider each one of these represents you know, winter, spring, summer, and fall in, in this year of developing our subdivision. But one of them will go. At the end of this year, we can see at the top of the second year stack, there's a little bonus. Whoever, for every player who builds at least two schools, they'll make two bucks. So all the players have an early goal they're trying to shoot for so we can get that little bit of extra money. And you can see in, in, uh, the, at the beginning of the third year, we can score, well basically if we have six roads we've built, we can either activate a, a, a residential, or I'm sorry, a luxury zone or a commercial zone. And then at the beginning of the fourth and final year, if we have four lakes, we can activate one of our industri industrial, one of our civic, or one of our residential. So that kind of creates an overall big picture we're trying to do because ideally we want to activate all those. Although, you know what, sometimes you might ignore one because you have a better opportunity if you ignore chasing those goals. But we do have some goals to be shooting for. They're both, they're all public knowledge. We're all going for them. So, let's start playing. That's the big picture. Now, the first thing that happens at the beginning of a turn, remember, we're going to play through four turns where each of us gets an opportunity to act, and the fifth turn goes away, and then we deal with our bonus. So, at the beginning of a turn, we roll the zoning die. You can see it's got a bunch of colored icons that match all the colored icons on our player boards. This is going to tell us what we have zoning permission to build on. Yellow star. Okay. So if I look at my board, I can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six yellow stars. So does Jen, although because she chose a different board, they're in different positions. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these five tiles and install it on one of my stars. Although, actually, there's a bit more to it than that. That's probably what I'm going to do. But if it happens that on a given turn, wow, I don't want to build, a, this is not what I was hoping for. I was really hoping, I really wanted to build here for whatever reason. You can pay two bucks and ignore the zoning commission and then build wherever you want. 
But money, every two bucks you spend, that's a point you lose because at the end of the game, two bucks is worth a point. So that's a choice you can make every once in a while. Alternatively, if you don't like where the zoning die told you you could build, you can always build one time and one time only in this nice little park area. Both Jen and I have one. But if you build there, that's two. If you don't build in this space, at the end of the game, you get two bonus points. So you don't want to build there unless you absolutely have to because that's two points you're throwing away. Alternatively, if for whatever reason, you just don't want to build this turn at all. Maybe you just don't have a good build option. Maybe the die screwed you and you don't have any money to spend. You can just discard a tile, throw it away, and that's a way to get two bucks. So those are your options. That's what you're going to do every turn. And so let's do it. All right. <clears throat> so both Jen and I are going to build on yellow stars. Because really, at this point, there's no reason. We, there's a lot of open opportunities. There's no reason to waste money by building in a specific spot. Oh, and remember, we are also, we have an eye on the prize. We want to build schools, we want to build roads, and we want to build lakes. Those are all important to us. Now, ro schools, roads, and lakes are not, they, they are never, we never get zoning tiles for those things. But depending on what I build, if, and actually what I'm probably going to build is my one resident tile I got. If I build this resident tile, this little cheat sheet here reminds me that whenever I build a resident tile, I... I can immediately build a school right next to it. And it actually shows me on the tile as well. You can see right there. Build a residence tile, put a school next to it. Although, I'm sorry, not build a tile. You can see there's the icon for the static cam. It's not build this tile, but activate. If I take this tile and I put it here on this yellow two, that's it. Nothing's going to happen. It doesn't activate yet. I've just built something and I've earn two points because if I didn't cover up this tile at the end of the game, I would lose two points. So building here basically gets me some points. I could build over here and it would actually get me three points because that's three points I won't lose at the end of the game. Hmm, should I do that? No, no, no. I'm going to keep my office an option because of building over here, it's obviously worth more because I'll get three points, but it's kind of in a corner and that will limit my growth opportunities. So I think this um, negative two right there, I've scored two points by building and that's it. Because what you do is, you pick the spot you're going to build based on the die or paying or whatever. You pick the tile you're going to build, you plop it down. And at the end of the game, of course, I'll score some points. Because, or at least I won't lose points. Then, if when you put it down, you have put it next to an existing zone tile, the existing zone tile will get activated. Now, I didn't put this next to anything, so nothing gets activated. But on my next turn, say we roll the, uh, the, the red hexagon. I could then put one of my uh, put a tile here in a red hexagon, and that would activate the residence that I had previously placed. And by activating that, I will get the opportunity to build a school. And remember, I want to build two schools. So <clears throat> you can see this game is a lovely mix of short-term and long-term and very long-term planning. But anyway, I've made my choice. I, I chose my one residence so I can start working on schools. I put it in a yell. Now, Jen, we do this at the same time. I should say, I have no idea what tiles Jen has. She has no idea what tile I have. We both play simultaneously. Jen, she's not a sucker. She is also going to chase after the school bonus. So she's going to, because she started with two residences. And you know what? She is going to cover up her number three. Because, you know, my, my number three was against the wall. That would actually kind of limit me. But her number three is actually kind of out here in the open. So she just scored three points for this. And she's still got a lot of variety for where she wants to build next to it. But the tricky thing is, for her, her road is on the outskirts. At the end of the game, every tile you've placed, or I'm sorry, every zoning tile you've placed that has access to this major highway will score you five bonus points. And a, a zoning tile is considered to have access to the highway if there are, if you can trace a line from the tile to the highway of either empty spaces or roads. So the tricky thing is, Jen building this so far away from the highway is, she potentially might not get five bonus points if she doesn't ensure that this thing is connected to the, still connected to the highway at the end of the game. It's connected right now, because you have to imagine thematically that all these empty tiles are full of small country roads. So it is possible to drive from the, uh, you know, from the highway to this zone. But as we start filling it up and those country roads get you know, gobbled up by other things, then we might run into trouble. So Jen might have to build some extra roads, but we'll worry about that later. So <clears throat> that was it. That was the first turn. Told us to build on Yellow Star. We both decided to build residences. 
We didn't activate anything and now we're done. And now here's the cool part. At the end of the turn, I take my tiles that I didn't build and I give them to Jen and she gives them to me. Yes, folks, this is a drafting game. Fast becoming one of my favorite magnets. The more games I play with this, the more I love it. Love Notre Dame the first time I played it. Love Seven Wonders. You know, drafting is awesome and it's awesome in this game because you know, in the beginning of the game, it wasn't a really tough choice. Uh, you know, I did this, but over the course of the game, you'll get into situations where, okay, this is what I want to build, but oh my gosh, if I give that tile to Jen, I can see exactly where she could put it. It would be the perfect move for her. So do I build that tile instead? You know, that kind of interplay between players is always wonderful. But anyway, that was the first turn, and at the end of the turn, I gave up all my luxuries, and now maybe Jen's going to take one, and that's one less luxury I'll ever get to build. Particularly because these are the ways you generate lakes. And you'll notice we need four lakes by the end of the game, or close to the end of the game. So anyway, second turn, let's roll the die, see what we get. And we get a brown circle. That is perfect for me because, hey, that means I can place a tile here in this brown circle, which means I'll activate my resident, which means I'll build a school. Jen's very happy as well because her negative three brown circle. That was a perfect roll for both of us. Now it's just a question of choosing what we're going to build. Let's see, and so I've got, I could build another residence, which would let me get going on a second school, and I could build schools much quicker, or I could go for a commercial and start trying to build a sidewalk. Sidewalks are worth points, schools are worth points, but only if you build them up three stories tall. You know, building just a single school is, is great, but it's not worth any points. It's worth the points you know, because I cover up a space so I won't lose those points, but it doesn't get any points until I build a little school, like just a little middle school, that's not worth points. Upgrading it to a high school, still not worth points. Upgrading it a third time so it gets to a university or a community college or something like that, now we're talking points. Awesome. So, and if I want to push schools really hard, it might be worthwhile to build a second one because then these two things can kind of you know, trigger off each other and I could build a school very, very quickly. But I think I'm going to diversify. I'm going to put down a commercial so I can start working on sidewalks as well. All right, so I've chosen the tile. I put it on, and I, and I could put it on my other brown spaces, but I'm going to put it here because that means now that I've placed a tile next to an existing one, I get to activate the existing one. And to activate this means... I get to build a school. And now a school can be built adjacent anywhere next to this thing. I think I'll build it here because it's going to cover up this negative three space and that effectively earned me three points. I could build it over here. No, that's not a bad idea. Maybe because this is also a negative three space. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to put it over there instead of over here. Because <clears throat> you do have to think about now because if I want to increase this school because I want to do it I want to build this school up higher. I need to activate this residence again every time I put another zoning tile next to this residence I'll activate the school and so I got to think about but I also want to think of well, let's see no Yeah, yeah, well see here's the interesting thing schools don't care about having a line back to the road so if you can put these outer edges that could get completely choked off from the road if you fill them up with schools and lakes and parks, you're golden. If you fill these outer spaces up with zones, then you might be running in trouble because it's harder to get those zones touching the road. So I think I'm going to fill up one of my tougher areas to fill with that. All right, so that was my turn. Jen, meanwhile, at the same time I'm doing this, Jen is also making her own choice. And she probably wants to fill up this space so she can activate her own school. And let's see. Now, she could build an industry, industrial zone, which would let her get some roads on the board. <clears throat> and roads are important to her because Jen knows the highway is so far away. If she wants to score five points from this thing, if she's not careful before too long, this thing could be completely cut off from her highway. So I think, although on the flip side, if Jen gets a luxury zone, she could start working on lakes. But remember, we want to build a lot of roads too for this second thing. So I think Jen's going to choose industry. She'll plop it down right here. That's nice. That means um, you basically earn three points. And now she's placed it next, she gets to place a school herself. And just like me, I think she's going to slam it over here in the corner in one of these negative spots. She'll put it here because it takes care of this negative three. Now, she could put it here to take care of this negative three, but then that's gobbling up one space that would be potentially useful for her because if she leaves this space open later on, if she puts a zoning tile here, it would activate two other zoning tiles. So she would get to activate this and this. So I think she's going to build it there. All right, that was the end of the second round. Shall we keep going? Yeah, what the heck? Let's go on ahead to, oh, and of course, 
And so nobody's built a luxury zone yet. I got all my luxuries back. And Jen gets all these back. Okay. Moving on to the third round. Let's see what we build. It is the blue raindrop. Oh, we're both very happy because, as you can see, we both can... Well, let's see. If I build on a raindrop, I can activate this uh, commercial zone and I can start building a sidewalk. Jen's happier, though, because if she builds on this raindrop, she will activate her school, or I mean her residential, and that will let her build a second school and she will have achieved her goal. So Jen's very happy about that. Now, and I got a choice to make. I could go on ahead and follow the zoning commission and say, build right here, and that's great. That's negative three points. I could start working on a sidewalk, but I'm not getting any closer to my school um, issue. So instead, if I wanted, I could pay two bucks to ignore the zoning commission, and then I could say, build this right here. It's a three-point space, and I would activate two tiles, and so I'd get another school, and I'd start building. But do I want to give up a point by spending money to break the zoning law? And that is the crux of the choices. The two tough choices in this game are where do you build and do you break zoning laws and give up points to do it? And what, uh, what uh, tiles do you give to your opponent? Now me, I don't have to worry about that. It doesn't matter. I'm giving Jen some luxury. I have to build luxury because that's all I got left. <coughs> Let's see. Now, this is the next to the last tile I'm going to build. I'm gonna only going to bit to build one more. So I still have a chance. On the final round, if, I, if we roll green, pink, or red, I still have the opportunity to activate this and get the school done. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gamble a little bit. And I'm just going gonna, gonna to follow the rules. I'm going to cover up this negative three spot. And that means I get to activate my commercial zone, but not my residential. Next turn, I got to do that if I want to if I, if I get the school bonus. All right. Now, um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I always have to put these icons facing to the left because some of the things, when, um, when, you, when you activate a luxury tile, this indicates that you can build a lake on any of these three axes anywhere you want. And when this thing gets activated, I could build a lake here, 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 or all the way over here. There's a lot of flexibility. That's why you can't just put them down however you want because that would change their functionality. But anyway, so I'm doing that. And now because I put it next to a commercial, I get to activate the commercial. Commercial means I can build one, two, or three sidewalks. And of course, I'm going to build three. Let's see. Now, sidewalks are interesting. You, at the end of the game, you score your best sidewalk. And a sidewalk is considered good. The, better, the, the more unique tiles a sidewalk touches, the better, the more valuable it is. So I think I'm going to build, or I'm sorry, not touches, but it has to be adjacent. So I think I'm going to start off by building my first little bit of sidewalk here. Now this sidewalk touches, is already touching two of the, of the, of the four. Is it four? Um, no, two of the five types of zoning. Then I'll keep on building the sidewalk. I'll build it here. And then I'll build my third one here. Because you have to expand. I could have built off into no man's land, but I, you know, I'm going to expand. So now this sidewalk is adjacent to three of the five zoning tiles. And if I build a little bit further, it'll also be adjacent to one of the four types of improvement tiles. Now, if this sidewalk at the end of the game is next to at least one of each of the zones, and at least one of each of the, uh, the improvements, parks, lakes, roads, and schools, this sidewalk will be worth 20 points. Um, is that right? Yes, yeah, because you, you multiply the number of zoning tiles times the number of improvements that it touches. So I'm on my way to getting a nice big score on sidewalks at the end of the game. All right, so that was me. Meanwhile, Jen, <sighs> let's see. So Jen's got the same choice. Although for her, it's a little bit easier. I think she is just going to go on ahead and play. I think, and in fact, actually, Jen, so she can build another residence or she could build these things and start working on sidewalks as well. I think Jen's going to build another residence and she's going to put it here next to her first one. Okay. <coughs> and now that means Jen has only activated one tile. See, if she, if she broke, if she paid... Uh, more money, she could put it here and um, you know get this negative three spot. Ah, now actually, boy, I think Jen is really tempted to do that. Oh, but see, here's what I was thinking. If I put this here, later on, if I build a tile here, it would activate both of these, and then I'd be, uh, Jen would be working on two schools at once, and that could be pretty nice. Hmm. Let's see here. Yeah, I think Jen is going to put it here so that later on when she pl plays something here, she'll activate two schools and a highway. So that'll be nice. 
And because she's put this down, she now activates this residence and can put her second school down and boom. Now she could put it in any of these spaces. She's going to put it here. And now she has built a two-story school. It's still not worth any points, but she's very close. And since she's put two school tiles down, she has hit the goal. All right, so that was it. At the end of the turn, we switch tiles back. And we roll. Yellow star again. <coughs> and now this is it, folks. This is the last tile we get to build before the end of the year. And so one of these tiles is basically going to get removed. And in both our cases, we have no choice. So yellow star, that is bad luck. I was really hoping for hexagon or pink because then I could have slapped them down or green because then I could have activated and got my second school. Now I think this turn, I'm going to pay two bucks and break the zoning restrictions because I do want to make sure with this last tile that I get the... Uh, my school built because we're about to finish that. So I'm gonna. So now that I'm breaking, I could build anywhere. I still want to build this space, this space, or this space. I think I'll build here because building here is going to activate all three of these tiles. So it's going to be a very powerful turn. So and it's a negative three, so I also score three points. So that's pretty cool. So now I get to activate these three things. First of all, I'll activate the residence. And boom, I built my second level of a school. I get the, tr the bonus trick as well. I activate this, um, this commercial, so I get to put three more roads down, or sidewalks. So I'll put one here, and hooray, now my sidewalk is touching an um, improvement zone. Although in four, and I got two more, and I don't know where to build them. <sighs> Let's see. Well, where I put these things is going to determine where I want um, to build other stuff because I'm going to want to build. Basically, building the sidewalk is going to determine how I, the future of my subdivision. And you know what? I guess I will go on ahead and build it like this and this. So I'll just kind of keep on building it in a relatively straight line. And now also, I get to build a lake because I activated this. So let's take a lake. And I could, well now interesting, I could build it north, southeast, or southwest. I can't build it north because all the spaces up to the north are full. I could build it southeast, fill up this space, it's a negative three, or I could build it southwest and I could fill up any of these spaces. I think I'm gonna build it southwest, I'm gonna put it right here and I'll tell you why. I can't put it north. If I put it over here, what has now happened is this commercial zone is completely cut off from the highway. Because remember, for a zone to be considered connected to the highway, and remember, um, only the zoning ones, lakes, schools, parks, they don't care about being next to the highway. But this thing, I could score five points if this thing is connected to the highway. Now currently it's connected to the highway because I can trace empty spaces there. As soon as I build this though, boom, it's cut off, I've just lost five points. So instead, I'm gonna build over here. There we go. And so that means I still have the opportunity to maybe, with an industrial space, build some roads in so that this thing has an opportunity to still touch the highway at the end of the game. And the nice thing is, I have just made my sidewalk a little bit more valuable because it's now touching a new type of tile. So there we go. So to recap, I put a new tile down, I activated three things, which got me my school bonus, which got me a longer sidewalk, and which got me my first lake. Now, whenever you build a lake, uh, basically every, and you can see it shows it right here on the lake, every tile, every one of these tiles, basically every tile in the game except for lakes that is put next to a lake generates two bucks. So this lake has two tiles next to it, I just generated two bucks. So I had to pay two bucks to do this, but I got the two bucks back by building the lake. And if I ever build next to this lake, I'll earn more points. Unless, of course, I build more lake tiles next to it, which would be kind of a bummer, because I'm sorry, not points, I'll earn more bucks. So that was my choice. Now it's Jen's final choice too. She has to build on a yellow star. Now, she would have loved to have built here. She would love to activate all three of these things. But she can just adhere. She can just, she doesn't have to start throwing money away, because that's throwing points away. She could always build into this space later. And if she built here, let's say, she could start building a second school. And then she'd still have, um, and then later on, if she built a, a zone here, that would um, fill up, yeah, I think she's gonna do that. She's not gonna break the zoning law and spend money, she's just gonna build right there. Or should she build right here? Let's see, now what Jen is planning is she wants to finish this level three school and she wants to start another one there. So that means this thing is gonna have to get activated two more times. And there's still three spaces next to it. 
But if she puts this over here, it might alter. And well, actually, look how close this is. This is very close to Jen's road. Yeah, I think she's happy with that. She's going to build that right there in this star. So that means she earned two points, and she activates this, and she has started building her second school. Boop. It's not worth any points. It's more than she needed, but um, she's pretty happy with that. And now later on, when she activates this thing, she'll be able to build a lake somewhere uh, like, like you saw me do. Okay. <coughs> so that was that. And... Okay, we are done with the first year. Congratulations, everybody. At the end of the year, we look at the bonus thing and we see that, hey, you know what? We both got two schools out, so we both get two bucks. One, two, one, two. And now we start the second year. Let's split up the second year. And, you know, we're always going to be getting more zoning tiles. Hey, we start to see some civic tiles, some more luxury, some more industry, some more commercial. There we go. Okay, a little bit of everything, and we're getting ready to start the second year, knowing that at the end of the second year, we really want to have six roads that we built. And to do that, we need industry. I haven't even gotten on the industry treadmill yet, although Jen has. She's got an industry. She just needs to activate this thing um, three times. If she can get th three things built next to this, she'll have activated three times, and she'll have the six roads she needs. So, if you'd like to find out if she pulls that off, and if I pull a rabbit out of my hat and get six roads myself, or if I ignore that instead, go for the lakes, or I ignore both of them and just keep on trying to make my sidewalk better, or who knows what, you can hit the button that's on screen or follow the show notes, and we'll play through at least one more year. We'll see how it goes. Or, um, and otherwise, you can hit the, the button to go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.